Hey folks, Scott Rogan here, the Home Cinema Architect, and I'm joined by Bart of Barco Residential. Hi Scott. Hey, welcome. So we're Thank here you. in Perth, and mate, you've probably done some big rounds. Tell me, what's your position with Barco Residential? Well, I'm a Barco Residential, and I'm a business development manager. I'm responsible for both the Europe, Middle East, and Africa, as well as the Asian Pacific uh, markets. Right, so that's only like at least half the world. <laughs> you can say that, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Great, and we're here today with a very special new product, uh, which is is the new uh, Bragi Cinemascope, high, yes. Cinemascope High Dynamic Range Ultra HD Home Cinema that is Projector. Correct. Yep, so this thing's really special, very unique for a number of features. Obviously, Barco Residential has a number of unique features in itself, but then this model has a few other elements as well. We've just seen some footage of life. Love my sci-fi, so that was awesome. And I can tell when the picture quality is this good and the HDR is truly fired up because we've got the light output, these movies get more intense and more scary uh, by do. the moment. Yeah, so, um, okay, so the Braggy projector. Um, tell us a few features about this. Well, to start off, it's got the 0.90 inch uh, DMD chip from TI. So we're using DLP as technology which is actually core uh, to what we're doing and that links back entirely to the old commercial cinema story as well. So we're using the heritage and the legacy of that to improve and actually give the best possible cinematic experience that you can get or that you can obtain in the home. So if you're looking for that real cinematic experience, it starts all with that. And then the chips, the chipsets, the chip so DLP indeed. is used in 99% of all commercial and studio projectors right? well over 90% in 90, the, oh, the, no. yeah, yeah and then if you look at the market share of Barco uh, mm -hmm. in that commercial din digital cinema space we're talking about 52% worldwide so wow that's quite something indeed and to put that into context we're talking about plus 85,000 screens in total oh. so if you're talking about reproducing that yeah. cinematic experience yeah. in the nicest residential mm -hmm. spaces that you can get well, then actually that is the technology of choice there. Cool, but these, so these DLP chips and then these DLP chips, right? Well, you we're using the bigger chips indeed to begin yep. with. So uh, on this one, like I said, the 0 0.90, yeah. 0 0.90 inch show that gives you the, up, the, the possibility to go for the bigger uh, or the higher brightness range okay. while still retaining superb. So the DLP, you've got big chips, big brightness, and of course reliability. Yeah, and talking about lifetime and reliability, this unit will go up to 50,000 hours of lifetime. Wow. Um, so, talking about reliability, stability, yeah. ease of mind, uh, mm. comfort for the end user, which is what yeah. we're talking about, that's for sure, that's definitely there. And that's a big, that's a big difference compared to the other manufacturers, which you just mm. mentioned. Yeah. Um, because if you're looking at those kinds of specs, yes, they list 20,000 hours of lifetime for the unit, mm -hmm. but actually you looking at the at the Elcos panels, those are starting to degrade much faster and right. the overall lifetime of those are 10 to 15,000 hours at best, so. Right, so the light source, the new laser light sources are going a bit further, but well, the actual chipset, the core of the technologies are not as sort of durable, really. Correct, correct, so, uh, but for reference, the Bragi Cinemascope, mm -hmm. to come back to what you mentioned yeah. earlier on, a couple of the unique features, Bragi Cinemascope is actually using LED as a, the light, uh, yeah, light source. Yeah, so this is particularly unique. LED we sort of saw pop up five years ago in a few brands, and then it kind of dropped away a little bit, and then lasers popped up, so I was sort of quite curious and exciting to see this, I think LED initially was struggling maybe to get enough light output or maybe also we want color space, right? I was, yeah, indeed. I mean, we're always monitoring technology evolution mm -hmm. and what's feasible uh, from a performance point of view, but also it needs to make sense from the te mm -hmm. technology point of view because we wanted this unit to be quite compact in its form factor. And if you are having a huge unit that needs to go inside a residential space, yeah. it sort of defeats the purpose, right? Indeed. But with technology mm. having reached the point where we're at right now, I mean, it made perfect sense for us to incorporate this into our into our Bragi cinema. Okay, stock. cool. And indeed, if you're talking about using then LED as your source of illumination, it results in a in a much nicer way of presenting the colors. There's more pop to it. The saturation mm -hmm. is better. Wow. And it's being perceived by our human eyes as being brighter than it actually is on paper, which is yeah. a quite nice effect. It's interesting. They say the lumens from the LED is is if the measured technical lumens um, 
is probably 30% less than what we actually perceive. So Correct. that is, it's, it's, if it's say 2,000 lumens on paper, we're actually perceiving it to be more like 2,800 or something like that. Correct, correct. Yeah. It's the Helmholtz Goldrush effect that you're talking right. about. Yeah, exactly that. Cool, we'll maybe put a link somewhere for that technical effect <laughs> if we want to nerd out on that further. So cool, so the Bragi as well is in exclusively in one of Barco's most unique features, which is the full cinemascope chipset yep. so uh, of course cinemascope being our 2.4 ish or you guys have gone for 2.37 correct aspect ratio which is the medium of all our cinematic or panoramic sort of movie views so the whole panel every single like we can get the every pixel of this project is represented at the whole screen. correct we're using the full resolution uh, of the chip and that's also something that differentiates us from how we approach Cinemascope, mm. which is actually the only way that you should be approaching Cinemascope. Ultimately. Because other manufacturers are going to be starting zooming in and out. Mm -hmm. So they're going to be projecting black bars on top and bottom of the mm -hmm. screen, which is actually a shame because you're throwing away resolution light. for starters and you're throwing mm -hmm. away light mm -hmm. as well. And I mean, again, if you're talking about achieving real HDR performance mm -hmm. and you're starting with throwing away light, yeah. in the way you want to do it, yeah. that's not how you want to do things. So that's why we do things entirely different and we are also able to do things entirely different because of the DLP technology that we're using. Awesome, so so we so HDR is a big thing, right? And, and I don't think many people have seen HDR performing correctly at home, even on their LED TVs. There's a lot of setups and configuration which can easily bin <laughs> The yes. features of View HD and um, and particularly in projection, it's really quite delicate. Though um, that's starting to work now, and you guys have developed these projectors to hit the actual light targets that are starting to make HDR really dramatically impact the viewer. That's correct. And what we're also doing is we're taking the complexity out of the whole process mm -hmm. uh, for. For all of us in the industry for the installer but also for the end user mainly because the last thing that the end user was was want to do is look at the at the blu-ray disc or look it up mm -hmm. online and see okay was this movie mastered at a thousand nits two thousand nits or four thousand nits <laughs> and then determining the right setup yeah. or the preset on the on the manual uh and the remote control sorry but that's not what you want to do as, no. an, as an end user and definitely not in the high-end residential space. You want to come in, you want to take the remote control, select your movie, hit play, and the thing Done. should be performing as it should be, as best as the director's intent. Yeah. So so, the, so what you're really mentioning there, but for those that aren't quite aware, is the Ultra HD is mastered in the studios over five different kind of light output levels. Yep. And when the projector can't map and match and calibrate to that level, will result in, in really either compressing uh, the, the overall picture's yeah, dynamics, yeah, yeah. Or we end up for dull picture yeah. um, if it's only a thousand nits. So, um, and that's been real as a as a calibrator. I can see it. I'm, I'm looking at projectors all the time. I got the equipment to see it. We just can't do anything about it. So it's real pain. But the Barco, it can measure that data, yep. adapt, and give you the best picture regardless of the disc. That's correct. It looks at what was this disc mastered at, or wow. what was this film mastered at, and then we modify everything internally in the projector, and that goes really awesome. on the fly. Love it. And probably one more thing to wrap up, which I really do love to talk about, is the lens systems on these projectors. So rather than a projector that has a, a big multi-zoom lens and it can sort of project on a screen this big or this big, Barco have a specific lens for each throw distance. That's correct. Within, yep. within the high-end series, uh, which Bar Bragi Cinemascope is a part of, we have actually up to seven lenses to wow. cover a complete throw distance of 0.3 to 1. Uh, all the way up to 4.6 to 1. Wow. So that's quite a huge, uh, quite a huge throw yeah. ratio, let's say, uh, or throw range that we cover. And we do it over the span of these seven lenses because we think it's important to keep the throw, uh, mm -hmm. the, the throw range uh, ratios in those lenses limited. Yeah. Because you're if in the you sweet do that, spot of the lens, exactly. Right? If you do that, you're hitting the sweet spot. Wow. And you're optimizing again for brightness, for light output, etc. Because you want to open lens to get the light through, Correct. which is a big thing. So, Correct. and of course, you know, we want big screens, big impact. And and one of the struggles I have in our rooms, you know, we're usually around a four by five meter room for home theater, and a lot of the projectors you just can't get them far enough back yep. to get the screen size we really want. 
you can choose the lens that works exactly and you always get the screen size you want exactly love that yeah awesome uh look we've taken a good amount of time today to check out this range but thank you so much for sharing thank and coming all much. the way to perth yeah the most isolated city in the world so <laughs> thank you very much it's been our pleasure yeah and guys um to check in and find more uh find us on youtube as well subscribe and you'll hear more from me scott rogan the homestead architect and we'll catch you more then but thanks again thank you very much scott yeah.